<laughs> it's a worldwide banking system, apparently. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, something else that you wrote previously, and I think it was in your book, um, that comedy comes from tragedy and being Iranian in America from 1979 on had been quite tragic. Um, can you talk a little bit more for those tuning in? Like, what what is it about that tragedy and within that experience that drew you to it to talk about it in your comedy? Well, I am such an advocate for immigrants in terms of I feel that we should be very much accepting of immigrants. That's why, for example, the travel ban upset me, or or whenever we have these issues at the border, it upsets me. I'm not saying that our immigration system doesn't need some fixing. But my heart goes out to immigrants because I am an immigrant. I came to America in the late 70s when the revolution was happening in Iran. And I thought to myself, when that travel ban happened, I thought, what would have happened if when we landed from Iran, fleeing the revolution, if we had been turned back because this travel ban had just been imposed? Well, that could have been dangerous to us. And similarly to those that, that came from Syria or more recently from Afghanistan or they're coming from Central America, I, I feel that you know we need to be sympathetic to immigrants. And I know that as an Iranian immigrant, when I first came, we're one of the first groups who came to America fleeing the government that had taken over, which was the Islamic Republic of Iran, so we were the ones that were leaving Iran at the time were against that government, and we land here, and then when they take Americans hostage, suddenly we start getting the brunt of it because a lot of Americans didn't have anyone else to beat up or bully, so in America they started calling you effing Iranian, they would beat you up. I was in the fourth grade back then, and uh, kids were, you know, getting, uh, like I said, they'd, they'd, they'd be getting beaten up or bullied, or, or I've heard of other incidents of, of adults being threatened, you know, to be get killed. I mean, it was a real uh, heightened time, and no one, again, this goes back to the American blind patriotism that takes over. For example, we're seeing it now, sometimes when you hear about uh, Asian hate, uh, there's hate crimes against Asian Americans because of the coronavirus, which had nothing to do with these Asian Americans. So similarly for us, we had nothing to do with taking the hostages, but we were the ones getting the hate. And so it feels like we go in cycles and we don't learn, but I try as much as I can to remind people to, to, to you know, embrace immigrants and, um, and, and not blame them for the actions of some other government that has nothing to do with them. So that we were one of the first groups that that happened to. I mean, obviously there was the Japanese as well in the, in, during the World War II in the Japanese internment camps where Americans were being put in internment camps. So it's an ugly thing to see. And um, I think as a kid, I was pretty resilient. Um, I, had, I, was, I was good at sports, so that helped me get through it. I also, uh, I think I might have turned to, uh, comedy a little bit to try and deflect and not get bullied as much. And the third thing I realized later in life, I used to take a lot of candy to school and I used to give it out to, to all the other you know kids. And I realized I learned to bribe my way to friendship at a young age and not get bullied. 